For some of you, this is going to be the most intense thing you've ever done in your life. You're going to go from a regular civilian to a soldier, airman, marine, sailor, astronaut? What do the Space Force call their people? Guardians? Or a guardian. You're going to go through a series of challenges, no matter what branch you choose. <laughs> and you're gonna come out a changed person, physically and mentally. If you're watching this and you haven't gone to basic training yet, you're probably nervous and that's okay. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the transition from high school to the military. If you guys aren't joining Shout Out High School, it's okay because we're all gonna go through the same thing, no matter how old we are. I'm gonna talk about what happens to your body, what happens to your mind, how you think, what happens to your friends back at home, what happens to when you no longer live with mommy and daddy and you're all by yourself in the big world. I'm gonna talk about the beginning of your military career to possibly the end of your career, how you're going to feel, what your thoughts are, what's the military actually like. I joined the military straight out of high school and I've been in for three years now and I definitely would have liked to have a video like this to tell me what I can expect. If you guys have questions or want to talk to me, follow me on Instagram and join my Discord server where you can talk to other soldiers. If you're new here, definitely subscribe. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. If you're a veteran or a current service member, put down your transition. How was it for you transitioning from civilian to the military? I want to know. Regardless of the reason why you joined the military, taking the ASVAB, going to MEPS, and choosing your job is by far the most important step in your military career. It's going to be your framework of your career. It's going to determine what kind of people you interact with throughout your career and meet, what basic training or boot camp you go to. You can either be a dental assistant like me working chill hours or a cook working insane hours and get paid the exact same. And MEPS is born for everyone. There's no way around it. Hope you get a good doctor and not really a creepy one because some of them be kind of creepy. Hurry up and wait is the saying. It's going to be a lot of that in the military too. So get used to it. At this stage, you might still be a little nervous or having second thoughts about joining the military and that's completely normal. Make sure you address those concerns before you sign that dotted line and say the oath. For some of you, the military is going to be the best decision that you ever make in your life. It's going to give you a better opportunity of having a good life. But for some of you, the military might be a waste of your time. Please decide that before you go further. Because the further you go, the harder it's going to be to get out. For me personally, the military was the best decision I made in my life. After you pass MEPS and you swear the oath to the Constitution, you're going to go to basic training or boot camp. It's going to suck. And it's going to suck for a reason. If you're a dude, you're going to be bald headed. When you're about to go to basic training or boot camp, it is all going to be surreal to you. The people around you are going to be the same exact way. You're not going to know what to expect. You're going to be nervous. And when you see that first drill sergeant and that drill sergeant hat, your heart's going to be in your stomach. You're not going to know how to feel. You're not going to know what to think. You're going to think this is unreal because I'm like, bro, this is really happening. Like, I did not believe what I got myself into. It was crazy. But as I was saying before, basic training is going to suck. And it sucks for a reason. The military can be a stressful and high risk place. So it's important that you pick a job as I was mentioning before, that does not include any of those things if that's not the type of person you are. But regardless, the basic training is going to put you through the test to see if you can handle that kind of stuff. It's also going to be pretty annoying. You guys are going to be with people who still haven't matured yet from high school and they're going to do something stupid and in return, it's going to get everybody in trouble and that's going to get old real fast, but it's going to fly by. You may be discouraged or unmotivated at sometimes, but remember your reason why. Basic training or boot camp is not going to last forever, so make sure you have fun and make some memories. It's also going to be where you meet some of your bestest friends or what some people call their brothers or their sisters. You're going to develop some battle buddies. You're also going to go to AIT with these people or even your duty station. So if you guys learn how to make friends now and make these connections, your life will be significantly easier if you know somebody at a duty station or at your AIT, etc. And when it comes time for graduation and family day and you see your family, if they do come, it's going to be the best feeling in the world and you're going to be proud, motivated, and you're going to be glad you did it and stuck through it. After basic training, you are going to go to AIT, which stands for Advanced Individual Training. This is where you're going to learn your job. Now, coming from basic training where you don't have a lot of privileges, you're going to think AITO is this promised land where you get more privileges, you get your phone for longer. It's going to get old real fast. Do not get in trouble. Do not do anything that's going to make you stay there longer than you have to. You want to get out of there as fast as possible. If you have a hard MOS, do not slack off in school. Pay attention. Ask for help if you need it because you do not want to reclass and be miserable doing an MOS that you did not sign up for, but since you failed your A school, you have to do some crappy MOS 
and you're stuck for the rest of your contract. And at this point, you still don't know how the military is like, so you're still gonna have drill sergeants shelling at you, but not as much, but you're still gonna have drill sergeants. And depending on your MOS, you're gonna have a lot more privileges or a tiny, teeny little bit more privileges from basic training. You most likely still haven't been able to go home yet, so you might be a little homesick, but you should be able to talk to your families because you have more privileges. Have fun, if you can go all post, go all post and explore the area. I was in Fort Sam Houston, which is in San Antonio, Texas. I got to go off post. But most importantly, at this stage, you will probably be in the best shape of your life. After basic training and after all the smoke session you guys endured, you guys will be at the best shape of your life. So when it comes time to go to your first duty station and you're all motivated and proud to go out into the military and do your job, finally get more freedoms to do whatever you like, do not forget that you're leaving AIT most likely in the best shape of your life. After AIT though, you should be able to go home and spend some time with your family and your friends back at home. You're gonna notice that not much has changed and it seems like you're the only one who really did the change in and that's honestly life as an 18 or 17 year old at the time i was like wow that's crazy but like, do not let your home life back at home discourage you from going out and conquering whatever the hell you want to conquer you left your hometown for a reason and it's important that you did because whether you like it or not the military will force you to change and develop then you're going to go to your duty station you guys are going to go to your first duty station all motivated and excited to serve but you guys are going to quickly realize that the military isn't really like the basic training and AIT environments that you guys went to. I mean, look at all the military TikToks. Pants, no afro, no shirt, blowing purple, I'm not a star, I'm just a red low. It's pretty chill, it's pretty lack. And depending on the type of unit you get, you guys are gonna hate it or love it. This is where your expectations of the military either get met or not. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. When I first got to my first duty station, when I first got to Fort Drum, I expected a lot of different things about the military. I thought the military was gonna be like way stricter. I thought the military was gonna be something completely different than what it actually is. The 68 Echo Dental Assistant, I didn't even do my job because the unit that I got attached to was a field unit and they were actually deployed and I didn't have a doctor at the time. So they stuck me on gate guard as a dental assistant and I was 17 year old, they gave me a gun on my hip and I'm like, yo, this is not what I expected. I was out there scanning cat cards for like the first part of my career. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Some of you guys said that you guys spend a lot of time in the motor pool and don't do your actual job. It's like that sometimes in the military. It's a hit or miss on a unit that you get. Some of you guys are gonna experience bad leadership and the army in general just might not make sense to you. And it never will. So don't try to understand it. My best advice is you're gonna be new. Find a mentor or somebody who's been there longer than you, stick to the hip and hopefully they show you around and show you the ways of being at your duty station. You'll eventually get experience. You'll eventually learn how to play the system. I would say if you don't like your first unit or your first duty station, definitely at least try to go to one more to see if things change. If I were to give my best analogy of what the military was like, it's like high school, but like an adult version of high school. Like pretty much most of the people in the military are gonna come straight from high school. The military gives you a lot of opportunities just like high school to better yourself and if you don't take advantage, that's your fault. There's a bunch of schools and programs that the military offers you and if you don't take advantage of it, that's your fault. They're not gonna force you to do anything. You're gonna have bad bosses like bad teachers in high school. You're gonna go on field trips which are like JRTCs or deployments. It's pretty cool and you're also gonna meet a lot of cool people and make a lot of friends that are just going to disappear because that's what the military is like. You guys are going to spend so much time on the station and you're just going to go to another duty station leaving your friends. So definitely get their contact information and stay in touch. You're literally going to be 20 or 21 leading 18, 17 or 19 year olds and you're not even an adult yourself you may feel like. But the military is going to age you faster than most. Especially if you guys choose an MOS like military police because you guys are going to see a bunch of stuff that really 18, 19, 20 year olds low key shouldn't see yet because you guys are still growing up, but you guys are gonna look older, disgruntled. It's just a part of the life, honestly. So all in all, your military experience can vary, but if you choose a good MOS and get a good unit, generally your experience should be pretty good. You're gonna be living by yourself or have a roommate and that's gonna be pretty cool. You're not gonna be with your parents. You're not gonna have your parents on your back 24 seven. You're gonna set your own rules for the most part. You go to sleep whenever you wanna go to sleep, yada, yada, yada. And I personally like it. I'm a pretty independent person. I couldn't wait to get out of my parents' house and I'm glad I'm in the military. It lets me be my own person, which is pretty dope. While I'm standing standards and discipline to keep me on the right track. You're gonna watch your friends back at home grow up and do their own thing. It's gonna be pretty cool. You're also gonna meet new friends that you call your brothers and 
be friends with for a lifetime. I will say this though on a serious note, sometimes it does get depressing and lonely in the military, but I feel like that's normal. There's resources that you guys can go out and get if you guys are experiencing that kind of stuff. I recommend trying to go out and just explore your area, wherever you're stationed at. There's definitely always something to do. Make new friends, but don't just stay in your barracks room. And in my Discord server, one of you guys said a great point about the military and society as a whole. As long as there's problems in our society as America, there's gonna be problems in the military. Just because a person goes through basic training in AIT and they put on the uniform and they swear their oath does not mean that they are automatically a good person. And you guys are gonna see that. You guys are gonna see people who are just tired of the military, unmotivated. Do not get demotivated because of that person. It's only gonna be temporary. Since we're humans and we adapt, eventually you guys are just gonna get to the military life and the culture and just exist and go through the ranks. And I promise you guys, the higher up you go and the longer you stay in, the better it gets. As a private, you guys might not see it, but as a corporal, kind of junior NCO, been in for over three years now, it's like I've gotten to the stage where it's like, okay, I could do this, I see how it works, and I could function, it's not that bad. The changes that happened to me was that I cuss kind of a lot. I can control it, I don't really cuss that much on my YouTube channel, but your boy cusses a lot in real life. It's kind of bad, I gotta work on it. Also, all the military slang and jargon that the civilians will not understand if you talk to them when you go back home or you're in the civilian world off post, is like crazy to you it's like normal words or whatever but like for an example police call hands across america or there's just a bunch of silly stuff that we say in the military because i have no idea forget about 3 p.m and 3 a.m it is going to be 1500 or 0 300 all throughout your military experience though so you are going to wake up early your body's just going to get used to it and you're just gonna be waking up at 05, 06, and whenever you guys get the chance to wake up at like 07 or 08, you're gonna feel like you're doing something wrong. But in reality, everybody in the civilian world is just a normal day for them. But the military is also a very tiring place. You are going to be tired, man. You are going to be sleeping on the weekends most of the time because it is a very exhausting job. And so that's why I recommend taking advantage of all the time off that you guys can get because you guys deserve it. And you guys will notice that you guys will be able to fall asleep literally anywhere. About the military culture is that alcohol is a big factor in it. And so on the weekends, everybody's literally getting drunk and drinking and having a good time, yada, yada, yada. But if that's not your thing, definitely don't partake in it. There's a lot of vaping and all this other stuff. Just stuff in the military that not many people talk about. But one thing that's pretty apparent is the alcohol. People do get drunk in the military. We're all adults here. You could do that. But some people go a little overboard. So if you want to do that, that's cool. But definitely do it responsible. You're definitely going to meet other people who like to drink too, which is okay. Just do it responsibly. Don't show up to work drunk. The military definitely allowed me to kind of find myself because I joined when I was 17. I still kind of didn't know myself, but living on my own, it's allowed me to figure myself out what I like, what I don't like, what type of person, what type of persons I like to be around. And I like, I like the person who I'm becoming. Also, the military is going to force you to stay in shape and generally force you to become a better person because if you guys want to promote, you guys have to go to certain schools. You guys can't just promote automatically without doing something either, you know, depending on your MOS and how many points it takes for you to promote, you either have to go to college. So I'm in college right now, mainly because the military is kind of like incentivizing me to go to college because if I don't, it's going to be an even more hard time to promote in my MOS. For some MOS like 11 Bravo, it might not be the case, but literally, they force you to be good at PT, your marksmanship, just a better person, but to them, a better soldier. So that was my transition from the high school civilian to the military. Tell me what your transition was if you're already in.